Welcome in race fans and welcome to the most famous track across NASCAR, Daytona International Speedway. And welcome to the inaugural Next Gen Cup Series here at All-American Racing League as we kick it off with a bang here at Daytona. As most of the drivers are already into the practice session. Should be a good one here this evening. All-American Racing League has been growing over the last few months. Of course, finishing up their Cup Series. Just a few weeks ago. Make some changes onto the screen right now. Make sure everything's nice and tidy before the action starts. Got some race interviews lined up early on before the qualifying session. Take the scenic route around Daytona as we start getting some things taken care of on the back end. As I myself just joining the race session, making sure all the graphics are correct. See a lot of new names here in the STK live timing, which is always good. Charlie Dickey, Jim Ott, Mark Snyder. Brian Ludlow, Adam Engerstein, Cameron Harris. Just to name a few. At this time, though, I'd like to bring in somebody very special, of course. This season... is being presented by Top Sail Trucking. This is the Truckers Feed America Series here at All-American Racing League. And we do have Top Sail Trucking owner. We're going to bring him in for a pre-race interview, get to chat with him. Hey, Dan, it's uh, faded up in the booth. You got a copy? Hey, Dan, you got a copy? I do, faded. I got you. Hey, man. So uh, first off, welcome to All-American Racing League. I'm sure they appreciate uh, picking you up as a series sponsor. This is the Truckers Feed America series presented by Top Sail Trucking. Uh, so I wanted to give you a moment to introduce yourself um, and talk to me a little bit about 
The Cause, Truckers Feed America, talk about top sale trucking. Well, uh, my wife and I just have a small trucking company, uh, and we really are just trying to get, uh, you know, a little message out there that uh, that guys like us uh, out here on the road uh, really doing a, a lot uh, of hours and a lot of miles to try to keep food on the grocery store shelves. And, uh, you know, it's uh, there during COVID. We got a, about 10 minutes of fame when everything ran out. And uh, uh, so we, we kind of saw a little, a little opportunity there to uh, maybe just uh, tell a few people that, you know, we're still out here and we're still putting down the miles and, uh, you know, maybe a, a little bit of a, a safety hint, uh, you know, the, the big trucks, they don't, uh, they don't slow down very fast and, uh, they don't, uh, they make really wide turns. And, uh, so just, just trying to get a message out there that, that you know, us truck drivers are still out here, uh, trying to make a difference in the world. Yeah, that's right, Dan. And of course, food being very, very important, but just overall, I don't think America understands everything that we go and shop for or buy off Amazon or whatever it, 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 you know, gasoline for our cars, et cetera, et cetera. It only goes through the country or, or at least maybe more than one way, but it at least sees the, uh, the trailer of a, uh, of an 18 wheeler. And I don't think the country really, um, grasps just how important that um, truck driving is and truck drivers that spend a lot of time away from their home and from their family, um, you know, especially over the road guys that are that are traveling through different states. So um, on behalf of myself um, and my family, uh, just know, Dan, uh, much appreciation um, to to uh, the trucking industry. We appreciate you um, now kind of switching gears here. Um, talk to us a little bit about how you came across All American Racing League and sim racing as a whole, and what your thoughts are about the sim racing community and where you see it going. Well, from your um, from your perspective, um, David Hera uh, turned me on to my first race. Uh, we we were longtime NASCAR fans, and we kind of got out of it when it got a little too commercialized and you know too big money and. Um, and, uh, so I tuned in one time he had mentioned it to me and I tuned in and, and really liked it. And the wife watched it and, uh, she really enjoyed it. And we started getting more and more, uh, you know, involved in it, uh, you know, week after week and, and really starting to, uh, to see the, the, how much better this is non-commercialized, you know, down home guys really, you know, putting in the time not nobody's paying them a million dollars to put in this time they're doing it because they love to race and it it really makes all the difference when you're watching these races that these guys really want to be out here racing and uh i really think um that this is something that'll grow a lot because it's it's not that hard to do it um i personally you know i i have plenty of steering wheel time i, I don't have uh time to sit uh to do the sim but uh you know, as far as, uh, you know, I can go back and watch these races if I can't watch them live. I can watch them on YouTube. They're always fun. Um, the guys really put their all into it. And uh, and uh, my wife, Melissa, she's uh, every bit as much into it as I am. And uh, we really have a good time. And I think that the more people that see just how uh, much these guys put into, uh, you know, their equipment and the time for practice and and getting in here and chasing the points and, you know, and really just doing the work, putting the work in because they love doing it. And it's, it's just such a better way to do things. And, and I think a lot more people will find it over time and it'll, it'll really take off uh, a lot bigger because it's, it really is just a, a lot more passion to the race because it's not about how many millions you can get or, or, you know, if, um, you know, uh, everything that NASCAR became, it's about, guys getting out there on the track and doing their best and putting in the work and that really is what makes racing great talking with dan owner and operator with top sale trucking he is the all-american racing league uh next gen 
series sponsor, of course, Truckers Feed America. Dan, what does it mean um, for you now Now you started off um, with, with uh, some knowledge and some safety and all that stuff, uh, but what does it mean for you to be a, a, a series sponsor knowing that um, top sale trucking is going to be advertised every week, but also, like you said, the message, Truckers Feeding America, etc., um, what does it mean to, to stamp your name on a series like this? Because, you know, today, you know, hundreds of viewers are going to be watching this VOD, but maybe next week, thousands of viewers are going to be watching this VOD. So, um, you know, how does it make you feel knowing that uh, you're putting a stamp in this? We really love it. Uh, the wife and I both uh, are thrilled about it. You know, there's there's a lot uh, that we would like to say to the to the world as being, you know, this is, this is what we do. We are a long haul company. Uh, I don't go home. I, I don't see my house, but once a week or every couple weeks, uh, you know, we're as a, as a long haul company, um, you know, the, this is the kind of message we want to get out there and to see our name, uh, you know, stamped on the, on the intro there. It's, it's just really, it makes us proud that we can do it, that we're in a place to do it. And, uh, and, it, and if we're lucky, you know, uh, somebody will, will will catch the message and you know maybe give a truck driver a, a little more space or uh you know just any little thing just to know that we're we're out here and we're putting in the time and the sacrifice to make sure that you know when you go uh, to the grocery store or to the gas station or to walmart or, or wherever you go the guys like uh you know like me and and, and the other drivers that i work with uh, we're all out here really putting in the the hours uh, away from our families and uh you know living in these trucks to make that happen it's it's not an easy thing to do and you know being able to to come in with uh with i racing and with you guys and 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 actually be able to see that uh you know on the screen is it's really uh it's really great me and the wife are both thrilled about it all righty, Dan, we appreciate your time. I appreciate you jumping on board with the guys at All-American Racing League. And uh, who knows, maybe sometime down the uh, the season we'll bring you in here uh, for another one of these interviews. You've been great to talk to, Dan. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, keep trucking uh, uh, physically and figuratively. Um, <laughs> and uh, we hey, appreciate Peyton. you, man. Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to tell you, man, we've, we've been listening pretty well, uh, not the very beginning, but not far off of it, man. And you have, uh, you have really – come to be uh you know a hallmark in this series we love to hear you uh you do a fantastic job and i wanted to make sure I'm sure the wife wanted to make sure too that I, I passed you a note there that we really uh enjoy your broadcast well i i uh i appreciate that man that that means a lot to me man it, it really does so thank you for the kind words and uh we'll catch up with you down the road dan thank you faded all righty guys that was dan from top sale trucking some kind words for him. If you guys missed the beginning of that interview, uh, you know, Truckers Feed America series, Dan, the owner of Top Sail Trucking, um, ex excited about sim racing, a big fan of sim racing, uh, but also um, just, you know, a, a very good cause for this sponsorship um, about getting the word out there that, hey, it you know it, it's in the title truckers feed america and you know be safe out there when you're riding next to these 18 wheelers give them some room and uh just know that their job it, it's not as easy as just getting into a truck and putting miles down the road these guys are away from their families their wives uh their hobbies you know and uh a lot of these guys are, are sacrificing um other things that they love for a career that they love to make sure that we all have the things that we love. So really good interview uh, with Dan from Top Sail Truck, and I appreciate that, Dan, taking the time out, and thank you for the kind words. Now, on to the business. All-American Racing League introducing their next-gen Cup Series season getting underway here tonight at Daytona International Speedway. We got another guest that I'd like to bring in. Last season's champion, of course, that's going to be David Lerfano driving the Lucky Dog Detail in number eight, part of Hillbilly Motorsports. David Lerfano, do you got a copy? I got you, Faded. Hey, uh, David, appreciate you coming in here. Um, not unexpected, but certainly wasn't a time frame, so sorry to pull you away from the, the practice sesh, but I wanted to bring in here, first off, once again, congratulations on winning last season's championship. Hats off to you. 
We've had a couple of weeks turn around, <clears throat> and it's all business now as we start week one of the Truckers Feed America series presented by Top Sale Trucking. Talk to me a little bit how you feel about the next gen, Daytona, and some of the new drivers you guys have brought in for this season. Yeah, man. I mean, can't thank Top Sale Trucking and Dan enough for jumping on board to sponsor this this series. Uh, so a big thank you to them. As far as the next gen stuff, I mean, it's it's different. It's going to take some getting used to. Um, I put some time in at multiple tracks to try to figure it out, but uh, they feel pretty good here at Daytona c compared to like the old cup cars or even the trucks. So I, I think it'll be a little bit more tame tonight than some of you know the other series. But I I'm looking forward to a great season. We've grabbed, uh, picked up a few really good good drivers here. Uh, the competition level has only gone up since last season, so it'll be interesting. I'm I'm looking for some good good competition. Yeah, sure. So like I said, you joined Hillbilly Motorsports late last year. Of course, that's with uh, driver owner of the 15 car, David Hera. And uh, you picked up a sponsor late last season, which um, have came on board with you this season, correct? Yes, they are continuing to be on board with me for, for the remainder of the, well, this whole season. So, Sure. And that is Lucky Dog Detailing out of uh, uh, North Carolina? Yeah, right out of the Charlotte, North Carolina area. That's correct. So anyways, David, uh, thank you for um, this interview here. Thank you for your time. Good luck tonight, man. Uh, I expect nothing but good things moving forward with this league. You have done an amazing job, uh, not just last year, but the uh, the off season, the last couple of weeks, making sure everybody's got their um, T's crossed and their I's dotted. Um, so hats off to you, Lefano, for for putting together. Uh, I know you got some help with your admins and stuff, but um, when you're up there at the top trying to do everything, uh, it can get a little stressful. So uh, really, really good job, David, and I, I really appreciate you bringing me on board for this season, man. I, I love it. I'm ready to call the action. Good luck tonight, buddy. Thank you, David. You do you do an excellent job for us. So uh, we're looking forward to the season with you as well. I right, appreciate you, brother. All right, that was last season's champion, David Lerfano, part of Hillbilly Motorsports, along with Larry Garns and TV. Larry Garns, for guys watching at home, um, this guy's a rookie here at iRacing. I don't mean with the series. I don't mean with league racing. I mean all together. These guys, David Hare, I think specifically bringing in Larry Garns into the iRacing sim community about halfway through the season, last season, was learning the ropes, keeping his nose clean, hanging in the back. Well, towards the end of last season, picked up a top five to end the season off with. And as he's had a lot more seat time, I look at Larry Garns to be a driver that's going to surprise a few people out there, but he's not going to surprise me. I've been able to see the improvement each and every week live as we call these races. So shout out as, as uh, he's another member of Hillbilly Motorsports. So HMS rocking it with three drivers. Uh, this season, last season, there wasn't really a whole lot of uh, teams. Now, um, HMS kind of picked up um, towards the end of the season. But as we go through the updated team rosters, we have JLC Motorsports. They're going to be um, running the Fords. Uh, that's Louis Clark, Caden Tufts, Johnny May, and Austin Coliella. We have Beer Brothers Racing, another Ford Mustang uh, group, Freddie Houle, Casey Pacala, and Brian Ludlow. Assault Motorsports running the bow ties. That's going to consist of Chad Snyder, Joshua Hetrick, and Travis Rodriguez. Of course, HMS needing no introduction. We've already talked about them. David Lerfano, David Hera, Larry Garns. We do have a solo driver team, Triple J Racing, rocking the Chevy. That's going to be the number 19 car of John Higgins Jr., Next up, we have JB Motorsports, Chevy manufacturer, Jim Ott in the four car, Mark Snyder in the 21, and Jason Erson, 54. Next up, and of course, uncompletely biased here, we have Faded Motorsports running the Chevrolets. That's going to consist of Devin Smith, Kyle Martin. Shout out to those guys for uh, picking me up as a, as a team owner. Of course, I'm still going to call it like I see it. No favoritism once we are out on the track. But Faded Motorsports going to be run by Devin Smith, Kyle Martin. Appreciate you guys. Do me proud. Dark Horse Motorsports, another Chevrolet 
team is going to be manned by Tyrone Yo out of the in the O2 car. Speaking of Tyrone Yo having a phenomenal um, end of the season last year, he's been killing it on the short tracks. I do believe. Now, I could be wrong. I missed Thursday's race last week, but the last time I checked, he is the point standings leader in the Spet Dreams Car Club Tri-Track Championship that they run on Thursday nights in the Super Late Models. So Tyrone Yo coming in with a lot of momentum here at Daytona, and I expect him to bring the smoke alongside his teammate Patrick McQuaid in the 77 car. Free agents who are looking for teams as well. It looks like we have an Assault Motorsports development driver in Adam Angerstein. So if he can just hold on tight and put on a good performance, looks like Assault Motorsports might be bringing him on full-time. Braden Black, Cameron Harris, and Charles Dickey all running Toyotas. You guys might as well form a team of your own. But those guys are free agents right now. Braden Black, Cameron Harris, Charles Dickey all running on their own tonight. As we have about one minute left. We're going to play something a little special for you guys. Never done it before. Hopefully it turns out all right. All righty, a nice little national anthem to kick off the Daytona 500 as we head into the qualifying session here at Daytona. Wish I could have found one with a little bit better quality. Wasn't really able to test that out. It was a last minute decision to include that in there, but uh, probably could have. Show some a little better sound quality, but you know what? You guys get the point. And of course, of course, you know, we'll have to get, uh, we'll have to play two national anthems, maybe even three. We got Caden Tufts, the guy from up north, up in Canada, the kid, I should say, the kid. From up north in Canada, and we have Louis Clark racing tonight. He's all the way across the pond coming to us somewhere over there in those uh, those areas. Um, <laughs> so, But unfortunately, I didn't have time to track down all three national anthems. Um, but uh, we appreciate you, uh, Caden, and a huge, huge fan of Canada, by the way. So... Um, So we got going on here. There's one of our new drivers, Jim Ott. See if he's going to make his way out of the track right now, as it did take a little while for the cars to come over from the practice session to the qualifying session. Now, on another serious note, 
I just want to advertise right now that yesterday we had two tornadoes touch down by my home within miles, and tonight we are having very, very bad weather. I just went outside and looked before I played the national anthem. It is windy. It is dark. It is storming outside. So hopefully, thankfully, my internet is underground for the most part, but my power will see. If the broadcast comes to an abrupt end, just know there's nothing you can do about it. It's on my end. Power went out. We'll get back to the action as soon as we can. So I just want to let everybody know that now before things really start to hit the fan. And anybody else that's in the uh, the northeastern part of Illinois, if you guys are watching this, you guys know what we're going through. Stay safe and let's get through the night. Check my sound one more time. Make sure everything's good to go. It is. Okay. Sounded a little quiet on my end. I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's just these next gen cars. Looks like so far, 18 drivers making their way into the qualifying session. Jim Ott, who we're currently on board with right now. An All-American Racing League a rookie. Mark Snyder as well. Joining the Truckers Feed America series presented by Top Sail Trucking with the All-American Racing League boys. Cameron Harris, out of Charleston, out of Charleston, driving the Yoda, a new driver here at All-American Racing League. He's going to be wrapping up his qualifying time. I believe Adam Angerstein, that's the Assault Motorsports um, development driver out of Akron, Ohio. Another new name out here. And, of course, we welcome back the regulars. Casey Pacala, Patrick McQuaid, Joshua Hetrick, Tyrone Yo Jr., John Higgins Jr., Kyle Martin, Larry Garns, David Lafano III, Caden Tufts, Louis Clark, David Hera, Chad Snyder. And look at that. Jim Ott posting a time of 48.36. Waiting on Chad Snyder to do his qualifying run if he's choosing to do one. Other than that, all these times are locked in. It's going to be Jim Ott, your pole sitter tonight. Cameron Harris going to be sharing that front row with him. P2, Casey Bacala, Brian Ludlow, and Mark Snyder. The top five coming into Daytona. We're going to take a little bit of a pause here in the broadcast booth, and we will be back momentarily before we drop the green flag. Shout out to Joshua Grosso, by the way. Doing race control for All-American Racing League last minute. Just got him into the Discord today. So he's got the tough task of doing the race control for these guys here. I'm not too sure myself um, how easy or hard that job is. But uh, good luck to you, Josh. And uh, hope you uh, hope you find success, young man. So, 60 laps around Daytona with Jim Ott taking the lead. Of course, Jim Ott, JB Motorsports. A 
along with Mark Snyder and Jason Arson. Cameron Harris going to be a free agent or is a free agent. Might not be after finishing a second in qualifying out there on that front row. And here we go, getting them out onto the track. Here's the starting grid. We went through the top five, so we'll pick up with that 77 car of Patrick McQuaid running for Dark Horse Motorsports in sixth. Seventh, the Salt Motorsports driver, Joshua Hetrick. Aiden Engerstein, eighth. Tyrone Yo, ninth. John Higgins Jr. Uh, racing Triple J Racing. That's a solo driver right there, so hats off to him for getting into the top 10 here. Kyle Martin, of course, Faded Motorsports, and Mr. Dickey. And Grayson Racing going to be in that 12th position. That's your top 12 drivers going to be starting us here at Daytona International Speedway. We see a couple of people blinking already. Hopefully, they can take care of that. Not sure if we're going to be handing out EOLs to those guys. That's none of my concern. But just something to keep an eye on here. Let me know if the audio sounds good for you guys at home. I definitely don't want to be fighting the engine sounds or have you guys fight the engine sounds to hear me. So make sure if there's anything wrong with the sound, you guys let me know in chat. We'll get it taken care of. But right now, the pace truck's going to be off. Green flag to Jim Otten. The green flag does drop. And we're going to be drag racing here out of the front stretch at Daytona with the Truckers Feed America Series All-American Racing League presented by Top Sail Trucking. Come down into turn one. These guys are still side-by-side. -side. Advantage, though, to Jim Ott. You see these cars? Pretty much deadlocked right now. If you start it up on the high side, that's where you're going to be. There's not a whole lot of room to start switching lanes yet. But you see that high side picking up some momentum into turn three as they have now started to close the gap. You see Cameron Harris right on the outside of that number four car coming onto the front stretch. Who's going to lead? Lap one here at Daytona. It looks like that outside line with a huge push. That's going to be Cameron Harris leading the very first lap of the Next Gen Cup Series. Getting pushed by Patrick McQuaid. Casey Pacala in the mix there. Oh, looks like we're going to have our first caution of the night. Oh, oh, boy. You see the carnage? Lap two. Devastating. I think everybody from the front onto the mid-pack involved in that. We'll go back. We'll take a look at this from our... Top sale trucking blimp. Let's go back and take a look at this. We'll catch the tail end of it. The 77 involved hard. Oh, you see that car coming in? A huge lick to that number nine car. Like I said, just about everybody involved in the top 10 there for sure. There is that 99 car. Let's go back and take a look at this. Looks like he dives down low. Very Does a good job to avoid it. Gets taken out, though, at the very end. 
into the grass. Oh. Well, to be fair, that five car was picking up some steam there. 99 just trying to get back out of the track. Of course, so much damage there. Got a little loose. Got to be careful coming into these cautions. I know it might look like you're, you're free to just scoot on through. Nonetheless, All-American Racing League does offer quick repairs. I think they brought in two at least for the super speedways. So these guys, although a break into the action... Everybody will be able to come down pit road that has heavy damage, get a quick repair. We'll get these guys lined back up with the race control. And we will get started here momentarily. Might take a little while, though. Just about everybody had to come down pit road. I think, too. I think two quick repairs. Something that I've seen a lot of leagues lately do for the Super Speedway Series. I know... Um, couple of leagues that I run into that we have zero quick repairs normally at the super speedway series were allowed one some leagues who run one quick repair bumps that up to two at the super speedways just so that if something early happens like that I mean could you imagine if this league didn't have quick repairs we're on lap two the whole darn field would have been taken out we would have had about five drivers out there racing for the next hour So we took a look at the carnage. Get that out of the way here early. David Hera, a big, big, big winner out of that caution coming out. I'm not too sure if he made it through there and was able to stay out or if he just had a really good pit stall. But that number 15 car for Hillbilly Motorsports all the way up to second place now. He's going to be on that front row right on the outside of Casey Pacala, who's moved up two spots. He's going to be sitting in first place. Charles Dickey, or Charlie Dickey, excuse me, another big winner in that 37 Toyota, up nine spots with that caution. He's going to be sitting on the inside of row two at P3. Jim Ott not losing a whole lot of track position. He's going to be starting fourth with Tyrone Yo Jr. in that fifth spot. Behind him, Larry Garns. Kyle Martin's going to move up four spots after that. Into seventh, David Lerfano up six spots. Into eighth, Patrick McQuaid going to be dropping to ninth. And Caden Tufts up five spots, cracking the top ten after that caution. Behind him, Louis Clark. That's Those are teammates right there. So they're going to be starting into the... Uh, right next to each other, or at least close to each other, I should say. Adam Angerstein behind them in 12th, Joshua Hetrick 13th, Brian Ludlow down 10 spots after that wreck. He's going to be starting P14, John Higgins Jr., Cameron Harris, the biggest loser out of that wreck, down 14 spots since the beginning of this race. He was leading the race when that caution happened. Leading the first lap here at Daytona is going to be starting back P16th. Mark Snyder, Chad Snyder, looks like they're both a lap down, 17th and 18th, respectively. Now, back onto the track. Caution's going to get waved. Truck pay, or The pace truck is off. Lap 5, here we go. Green flag to Casey Bacala on the inside.
So Casey, that outside line working really good. He's going to get pushed back to the third spot pretty early on. David Hara getting a push from Jim Ott really early. They're able to check back down low. That preferred line here right there on that yellow line at Daytona. So David Hara going to be our third different leader here if you include the pole, of course. Can he get a lap led, or is Jim Ott going to get a good run? He's got single file behind him. Pretty much everybody single file now. There's a couple of guys in the back. Not too sure who that is. I think that's David Lerfano up there by himself. He's going to have to check down low, try to get into a draft here. Or else he's going to be all by himself. There's Chad Snyder in that number five car running for Assault Motorsports on the inside of David Lerfano. We have a straggler in the back. Not too sure who that is. David Harris still up front. As you can see at the top of your screen, Jim Ott still P2. This is Caden Tufts, ninth place. As you see, 6th through 11th, starting with Patrick McQuaid. There's Larry Garns up in 8th. He's moved up five spots after that caution onto the back end of that 99 car of Kyle Martin. So we get the big one out of the way. Early on here at Daytona, lap 9 of 60. We've been green for about three or four laps now. So good to see the rust maybe shaking off there early on. All the nerves are done now. We're just in the seats racing. Charlie Dickey, we talked about him before that restart. Up eight spots now, sitting P4. He's behind Casey Bacala. We get a look from our drone here, keeping up with the leaders down the backstretch. David Hera leading them all. I know it's a little soon, but David Hera leading the most laps here at Daytona so far. Lap 10 of 60. You see some drivers starting to make that outside or trying to make that outside line work. I believe that was Kyle Martin dipping up there. But uh, with this package with the next gen cars, hard to do. Got to stay with that bubble. This is a, uh, a feed from the spotter angle. So we're watching the race right now as if we were a spotter for one of these drivers. This is what they would see on the track, their angle at Daytona International Speedway.
David Harris sitting comfortable up there in that 15 Chevrolet. Still Jim out behind him. Casey Bacala third. Charlie Dickey fourth. Tyrone Yo in fifth place. We talked about Tyrone at the top of this broadcast. Bringing in a lot of momentum into tonight's race. It looks like he is going, going to continue that momentum for the time being. And you see both Snyders back in 17th, 18th. Both a lap down. So those guys fighting it for that lucky dog. Advantage to Mark Snyder momentarily. Nice green flag run here that's expected at Daytona, especially with these cars. The package that it does provide might not be the most exciting one uh, on these super speedways. As we see, it's mainly going to be single file all the way through. As David sends us on to lap 15. Looks like we have two packs of cars now. That second pack being led by Caden Tufts. He's got teammate Louis Clark behind him to draft with. A couple of guys on that outside line. That's the nine car of Adam Angerstein. Larry Garns behind him along with Brian Ludlow. So that's going to be three cars to their two, uh, talking about Caden and Louie. So we'll see if that three-car advantage with these cars, with this package, has the advantage like what we've seen with the current gen. So far, it doesn't look like that. You see the 88 and the 73 car there of LJC Racing being able to maintain that gap. For the time being, of course, as I say that, Larry Garns getting a nice push from Brian Ludlow. So if you're that nine car of Adam Angerstein and John Higgins behind him, if you see that, you know you're going to have to keep pace here. You definitely don't want a four car draft in front of you and there's just two of you. So that's exactly what they've done. They've been able to catch up out of the back end of that 150 car of Brian Ludlow. And at least be able to maintain pace in that second pack. Now back up out of the tail end of this one. We see Kyle Martin on the outside of Tyrone Yo. Tyrone backing off. He was riding that fifth spot right now. These guys are racing for six now. Tyrone and Kyle Martin. Kyle not finding the speed that he thought he would on the outside. Didn't really slingshot like I think he expected. So he's going to fall right back behind Tyrone in a single file fashion. Patrick McQuaid's going to take over that fifth spot. Patrick McQuaid having a really good season last year in the current gen. Looking to keep up with that success as we see a car way up high there. That's the 27 car of Cameron Harris. Now Cameron Harris, bit of bad luck there, was leading the race when that caution came out. And I'm not too sure what happened on the restart. If he wasn't, if, if he wasn't able to keep up with the pack when we went green or what. But he's going to go a lap down under green here. Now we see Kyle Martin work on the inside of Tyrone. Gets that done on the inside of 77. So Kyle Martin on the move. Up six spots. Going to be taking over P5. You look at that group right there. All single file. But it looks like that second pack with Caden Tufts and Louis Clark leading the way. Catching up ever so much out of the tail end. David Hara taking the lead early on the restart. Hasn't looked back since.
as you see that blue car on the right of your screen that's Caden Tufts that's who I want to keep our eye on when we can but right now we got a battle for the lead as the four car of Jim Ott looking to find some side draft on David see if he can make that outside line work we'll see if anybody chooses to go up you see the 77 of Patrick McQuaid getting some momentum on that outside line looking to catch up to the back bumper of Jim Ott can we get something going here as it looks like no he's gonna dip back check down be below and behind Kyle Martin which I think ultimately might have been a good move however as we say that there's that outside line with that 88 card Caden Tufts teammate behind him Louis Clark in the 73 on the back bumper of Jim Ott and here we go Louis Clark dipping down low will his teammate in that 88 do the same yes he does we see Kyle Martin on the outside looking for some help from Jim Ott. And here comes Caden and Louie. Who at one point was a half a mile off that first pack. Didn't take too long once we started talking about it for these guys to catch the tail end of the pack. And now that they're here, they're knocking down the door. Here we go. Caden Duffs up to six. Louis Clark behind him. Up nine spots. Up to seventh. Adam Angerstein, Kyle Martin, Larry Garns in the top ten. You see Caden doing the side draft here. Off of that 1-5-0 of Brian Ludlow. Patrick McQuaid in the 77 on the outside. Will 88 dip down low? He's got a chance. But if he does, he's going to leave teammate Louis Clark out to dry. So we'll see if he stays up high and continues to draft with his teammate. Kyle Martin checking up high. Trying to get out of the back bumper of Louis Clark. Those guys not seeing eye to eye for the most part, but they might here at Daytona. As everybody's looking for a draft partner to try to get something going here on lap 22 of 60. This is the Truckers Feed America Series presented by Top Sale Trucking. All-American Racing League. You're watching it live on Faded TV. And we appreciate having you guys here. And Patrick McQuaid with a huge push. Going to be your new race leader with Caden Tufts. Louis Clark. You see Kyle Martin there getting a little bit close on the four car. Might have been looking for some side draft, getting a little bit too close. He's going to get hung out on the clothesline up there all by himself. As here comes Caden and Louie. Just an amazing job by those guys to stick with one another. Both having opportunities to break and tail off. Deciding to stick it out with one another. And they find themselves P1, P2. Patrick McQuaid third. Jim out on the outside of David Hara. Going to be fourth momentarily. But I assume that inside line is just going to take over as Jim Ott finds himself out there by himself. And there it is, getting passed by just about everybody. David Hara, though, catching up. Losing some spots, but not the draft. You see him right there on the tail end of that with that white paint scheme. Patrick McQuaid in the 77 in the black and orange. Everybody else following suit. So a great job by those two guys, Caden Tufts, Louie Clark, teammates. It seemed like they were just so far off as we were in a, a, a two-pack there for a moment. Not only bringing each other up to that first pack, but now taking over and leading the race.
Anybody coming across this broadcast a little bit late? We've only had one early caution. Took out the majority of the field here, but we did have one quick repair at Daytona. So everybody came down, used that, got back out of the track. We've been green flag racing ever since. We've had four lead changes now with Caden Tufts being the latest. So the field now will bring up the uh, will bring up the track map for you guys. I think if we can make that happen. I guess not. I apologize. Thought I had a track map in here. Apparently, we do not. But I wanted to show you guys what it would look like. Because we have a lot of drivers separated. Of course, David Lerfano. Joshua Hetrick. And Chad Snyder. Way back here in this four-car group. So these guys trying to get something going together here. In front of them, we have Tyrone Yo, Larry Garns, Adam Angerstein, and Kyle Martin all in a group together. So there's about five cars here. And then in front of him, we have Charlie Dickey, basically all by himself. Now, of course, he's close to the action, but he's not really close to that, that bubble draft that these drivers keep talking about. And then in front of him, we have three cars, Brian Ludlow, Casey Bacala, and Jim Ott. In front of them is the lead pack. These four drivers being led by the 88 car of Caden Tufts, Louis Clark, Patrick McQuaid, and then David Hara in that 15 car on the tail end of this four driver pack. So definitely some spread out action as we come up halfway through the race. There it is, lap 30, officially 50% of the way through. The first race in the next gen cup series here at All-American Racing League. Shout out to Dan at Top Sail Trucking. Sponsoring the series, getting involved in the community. David Harrow letting letting up a little bit not too sure what that was about he's about to lose the draft with that 77 car though doesn't want to fall off too much that's what I thought maybe he was slowing down to get down pit road we'll see if teammate Larry Garns and David Lerfano follow suit whoa Larry Garns maybe not calling out that he was pitting you got to get down there a little bit quicker than that my dude and as you can see the mistake by Larry Garns and the up this everybody from the tail end. But I was I was curious to see if teammates uh, there from Hillbilly Motorsports were all going to come down pit road together. You never want to leave pit road by yourself here at Daytona. You're just going to get gobbled up by everybody else into the draft. So we see not only teammates coming down pit road, but plenty of drivers coming down pit road. They're going to be able to make their way back onto the track and at least have some drafting partners. Now, up front with Caden Tufts, Louis Clark, Patrick McQuaid. Patrick not being a teammate with these guys. However, you would think, oh, no. And we got a big caution. That's the leader, Caden Tufts. I'm going to be honest. I was looking down to my left at something else, just talking about some things. And in a blink of an eye, the whole landscape of this race is going to change once again. 
And we saw Larry Gardens get off track there. The yellow flag, Casey Bacala involved in that. Let's see if we can get a good look here. Oh, there's Casey just getting a little bit loose off track. Goes through the grass. Tries to get back onto the track. Locks him up and then backs up. Oh, no, 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 no. Wow. Wowza. Let's go back and take another look at that. Let's see if we can get another view. So it just spins the tires. That's fine. Through the grass, probably not your best bet, especially while accelerating. Onto the track there. Oh, no. Oh, Louis Clark involved in that. It looks like Travis Rodriguez or... Um, Patrick, Mc, Patrick McQuaid, excuse me, I always get those guys mixed up. Patrick McQuaid able to avoid all that, but that is so unfortunate for Caden Tufts and Louis Clark as it looked like those guys not out, not only out in the lead, but in very, very good uh, situation. Uh, it was a three-car pack up there up front. Again, Caden Tufts, Louis Clark. Patrick McQuaid all by themselves. Cars coming down under green for their pit stops. It looks like they're going to put themselves up in beautiful uh, position. And we got some more stuff going on in the back. That's that 02 car of Tyrone Yo. So a little bit of chaos there. Uh, Larry Garns kicking us off there. Um, missing pit road. But making sure that he was the only car affected by that. So good job to Larry Garns. Looks like Chad Snyder involved in some stuff. Let's go back and take a look. Let's see what happened here. So this is under yellow. It looks like there's a driver giving somebody a push. That's Kyle Martin pushing Louis Clark back to pit road. And then there's Tyrone. Obviously frustrated. David Lerfano wrapped up into this as well. Now this is all under caution. That 02 car just spinning out. I want to see this contact where Chad Snyder might have just been a bottom. A couple of these drivers might have just bottomed out on the track. STK will bring that to my attention as if there was a crash they'll be in the red so i just wanted to check out make sure nobody else was involved in that so unfortunately casey Pacala making just a terrible terrible mistake jim Ott involved in that as well i just want to go back make sure i'm covering everybody i see in red again it, it's probably mostly just cars that are bottoming out or something like that you see kyle martin in the background Pushing his rival, Louis Clark. Again, those guys not really seeing eye to eye for the most part, but Kyle Martin helping out there where he can. I like to see that as he's sporting the faded TV for for the season. But problems all over the track. Hopefully I didn't miss the restart to this race. I don't think we did. We'll catch it back up live, though. Patrick McQuaid, going to be your new Reese Slater. Race leader. Reese Slater. Reese Lighter. He's your new Reese Lighter. Anyways, Patrick McQuaid out of pit road now as we saw a couple of drivers. Able to come down pit road, get situated. We'll see where everybody ends back up. This might take us a couple of minutes here. It's only our second caution of the race. Could have been easily, easily avoided. Not too sure. I'm not going to keep name dropping, but I'm just not too sure what was going through that guy's mind. Is came down the track in reverse with cars coming up 200 miles an hour behind him. That's usually not a good play. So 
unfortunate circumstance. It happened. It is what it is. We'll move on from it. But you see Snyder, Pakala, Harris, and Tufts now finding himself two laps down. As he's still down in pit road. I talked about it at the beginning of this broadcast. I'm not too sure how many quick repairs were given out. If it was just one, some of these drivers might have their race all but done. We see Louis Clark back out there, though, with a nice shiny car. So he was able to come down and use his quick repair. There's Patrick McQuaid in the 77 car. So we'll get everything figured out. Still under caution here at Daytona International Speedway, opening up the season for these guys, All-American Racing League, their next-gen cup series. So it says Patrick McQuaid's the race leader, but I don't I, I don't know either we're gonna have a lot of wave arounds here or that's just not right. But right now, the SDKI racing live timing showing me Patrick McQuaid in first, Larry Garn second, David Hare a third. We'll see if that holds up. I see the race control being brought to um, or uh, worked tonight by Joshua Grossa. In the NASCAR voice chat, these guys are figuring things out on where to line up who and where. So we'll give Joshua all the time needed in the world to figure this out after an unfortunate caution being brought out there. Looks like I got something else going on here maybe in the replay. This is Larry Garns in, in the back. Well, oh, maybe not. She's going to keep me with Patrick McQuaid. Okay, that's fine. So there we go. We see... Okay, that was it. Larry Gardens was on the shoulder. He bottomed out. So he's, he's letting cars by. Looks like he's going to be starting from the back.
So now we start seeing some drivers getting the wave around here, getting everything situated. As you see in the chat, we can confirm that unfortunately for one of our drivers, Caden Tufts, who was leading the race, involved in that very, very odd caution right there onto the front stretch. His night is done, and that is unfortunate as him and Louis Clark battled their way from the back of the field up to the front in dominating fashion, and unfortunately, one mistake by one driver is going to end the night for one of the favorites coming into tonight's race. Nonetheless, we have 17 other drivers on the field or still left in the field, excuse me. I'm still seeing Patrick McQuaid, the race leader. We appreciate you guys being patient as that was a, a, pretty, um, a pretty nasty uh, caution. Um, a lot of a lot of guys were still in pit road. A lot of guys coming off pit road. It took a lot to get everybody back to being situated. So we appreciate you guys being patient with us. As it looks like. When it's all said and done, you see that 15 car go, taking it up high. It shows it shows me him being our new race leader. So we'll see if that holds now. Patrick McQuaid third, Jim Ott fourth, possibly Brian Ludlow second. So we'll see. I don't want to call. I don't want to uh, make anything official right now. I'm just updating you guys as I get updated with the live timing software. So now Louie going to have to latch on to somebody else who's working so well with his teammate. His teammate is now out. As both Johnny May and Austin Colo Coloella failed to make tonight's race. So Louie Clark, part of JLC Motorsports, Going to be out there by himself for the remainder of the race. Devin Smith, a scratch for tonight's race as well. So some drivers not being able to make tonight's race. That would put this field um, regularly, if everybody shows up and makes a race, well over the 20 driver mark. So like we said at the top of the broadcast, All-American Racing League making all the right moves to expand this league as big as they feel comfortable with. This isn't just a league where anybody can hop into and wreak havoc and race. You got to be you got to be a smart driver, you got to race clean. Talking with the admins here at AARL, they're wanting to keep it as big as they possibly can as long as the trust factor is there and they've done a really good job of that so far. So there goes the pace truck, and it does show David Hira as the leader. Looks like a couple of those cars are going to be starting in front of him. Chad Snyder and I don't know. That might be uh, Cameron Harris up there in the twenty-seven car. Not too sure. So don't let it fool you. That third car, a guy pushing through on the inside line right now, that 15 car, he is your race leader. You see the outside in that four car. We make contact. That's probably going to bring out another caution. Patrick McQuaid on the inside of Tyrone Yo, and that's going to bring out the caution. It looked like we we're going to be able to make it past that. Louis Clark involved in that on the tail end.
Tyrone Yo, Patrick McQuaid, and Louis Clark, your three drivers that are taking the main damage on that yellow flag. I tried catching it as live as we could. These guys were getting three wide there for a second. You see the, those two right there battling it out. Looked like he was going to save it, and he did. So a phenomenal job by the two drivers that were actually able to save it. Unfortunately, in front of them, Patrick McQuaid having trouble of his own getting into Tyrone, Louis Clark at the end of that. So uh, good job by those two drivers. Uh, I'm not too sure who that was, but they got into contact up onto the wall. A driver came down to the shoulder. He was able to save it. Looked like we were going to stay green flag racing for the moment. And then right behind them, disaster strikes once more. Again, Patrick McQuaid, Tyrone Yo, taking the big chunk of that. And Louis Clark here at the end, trying to stay down low. It looked like you can see Kyle Martin makes it safely through. Louis just not low enough onto the track there to avoid that. As that car came down. That's Patrick McQuaid coming down, hitting the 73 car on the right corner panel. So unfortunately, two back-to-back -back cautions going to slow us down here a little bit. That is expected at Daytona, though. Everybody's pedal to the metal here, and one little mistake can cost a lot. There is the 0-2 car of Tyrone Yo. David Hara, though, still going to be a race leader, and it looks like this time going to be out front. As you see, a couple of the cars getting a wave around there. We did have some lapped cars starting in front of him there. Looks like Kyle Martin going to be starting on the front row on the outside of David Hara. Kyle's been a driver here all night. That's kind of been on the outside looking in, if you will. On the outside or on the uh, tail end of some of these packs, trying to keep his nose clean. He was involved in um, a in the in the first caution a little bit, and ever since that, like I said, kind of been on the tail end of these packs on the outside looking in. Right now, he's going to have his shot as he's starting on the front row with David Hara behind him in the twenty one car. Going to be starting third is Mark Snyder. Uh, on the outside, Larry Garns, Jim Ott in fifth, Brian Ludlow sixth, Louis Clark going to be starting seventh, Patrick McQuaid eighth, Tyrone Yo Jr. ninth, John Higgins rounding out the top ten. Again, Caden Tufts in that 88 car, one of the favorites coming in to tonight is done. So an unfortunate turn of events there as him, Louis Clark, and I th and and uh, Patrick McQuaid. Those were your three guys that were staying out under green as some were coming down pit road. Those three drivers, we see a wave around there out of that number nine car. Looked like they were in complete control. And then disaster striked. So it doesn't look like Louie, even though getting tagged at the end of that. And coming down, I, I believe already using a quick repair. Got a push from Kyle Martin down into pit road. Was able to come down to his pit stall, use his quick repair. And involved in the latest caution, but not too much. Going to be starting P7. So we'll see if Louie Clark can team up with somebody else. And make his charge up to the front. But right now, all eyes on that front row. The number 15 of David Hara, the 99 of Kyle Martin. Gonna get us underway here in the front row on this restart. And let's get back to some green flag racing. There goes the pace truck. Excuse me. David Harrow with a nice jump there on the start. 
We'll see if Kyle checks down low, tries to get single foul behind David. Yep, that's what he's going to do. The outside line, trying to get something started up there. As I believe Larry Garns. You see Louis Clark back there behind Louis Garns. We'll see if those guys can work together as it looks like this first pack of drivers already starting to separate themselves. About the top, the top five right there. That fifth driver, Brian Ludlow. Larry Garns, Louis Clark. Gonna have to make sure they keep it as tight as possible here. Definitely don't want to lose this draft. Now it's a three-man draft, which is going to make the push even better. Will they go outside? Larry Garns wants to. Will Louis Clark follow suit? Louis Clark thinking about it. No, he's going to stay on the inside. So Larry Garns went up high, looking for a little bit of help. Louis said no thanks, stays on the inside, and brings along Patrick McQuaid. So unfortunate for that 20 car. As he thought Louie was going to go up high with him. Now Louie comes up high. The 77 car, Patrick McQuaid. The 21 jumping up high, trying to get to the draft with Louie Clark. That's Mark Snyder. A smart move by Mark. So we have Mark Snyder, Louie Clark, Patrick McQuaid, all trying to make something work out of the high side. Will they stay together? Nope, Snyder drops down low. And it's Kyle Martin and David Hera for the time being. Now, that's just a two-man draft, of course. So I don't think they're going to run away with anything. But if these guys behind them keep being undecisive on what line they want to run, we might see it. So two wide there. That's third, fourth, fifth, sixth place right there. All bunched in together. We've had a couple of cautions. Hopefully they can keep it together here for a little bit. 14 laps to go. Coming up on 13, and there it is. Tyrone Yo getting involved, and that's going to bring out another caution. Just as these guys were starting to get hot back from that restart, we'll go back and take a look at this. I could just feel it coming. I didn't want to jinx anybody out there. Some told me it was coming. Tyrone Yo Jr. wrapped up into this latest. Let's go back and take a look. As it looks like he's just coming up high out of the 21 car, honestly. Uh, it looks like Chad Snyder. Making his way through those. I think he came out a little bit clean there. Let's go back and look at this from the chase cam. Tyrone on the bottom there. Goes all the way to the yellow. Yeah, and just comes up on that 21 car. Another tough one. Not too sure what happened with that 99 car of Kyle Martin, but we did hear some contact. He was running P2 here, so not too sure what was going on. Oh, my goodness. We see... <laughs> The 
to see him getting stuck on between the track and the um, <clears throat> infield there, or the uh, the shoulder of the racetrack. So that was unfortunate. Not too sure what was going on with that 99 car. It looks like he was just trying to get up onto the outside, let the uh, pace truck pass. Well, that's a big mistake coming out of the 99 of Kyle Martin as he had to take a toe to the piss. That's probably going to be his race as well. So David Hara, who once led this race and is pretty close with Caden Tufts as leading the most laps. I'm not too sure between the two of them. Caden, once he got up to the front, stayed there with Louie for quite a bit of time. But David Hara finds himself back up into the lead. With only a short amount of race left. Now, Mark Snyder going to be joining him on the outside. Should have been Kyle Martin, but making a mistake there, a mental mistake that costed him a trip to the pits. So I believe he's going to go a lap down, maybe more. This should be it. This should be the lap. We say goodbye to this pace truck and at least go green flag racing for the moment. You see Louis Clark back up to fourth. Started seventh on the restart last time just a short moment ago. He's going to be on the outside behind Mark Snyder, Patrick McQuaid behind him. Those guys working together early on successfully. It's going to be Louis Clark relying on Patrick McQuaid to keep up that teamwork as they try to make their way back up to the front on what was just a silly caution earlier on in the race. But right now, if there's somebody that can get it done and do this restart and stay there, it's going to be that 15 car of David Harris, you see, taking the green flag. Beautiful restart there. You see Mark Snyder immediately getting behind him on his back bumper. And there's Louis Clark up to third. Ken McQuaid keep it with him. Jim Ott separating them right now. See a couple of cars on the outside. Everybody, though, for the most part, single file. I think that might be Larry Garns up high. He's been liking that high line pretty much all race. You see the four car now of Jim Ott trying to get something going on the outside. Here's the 21 car of Mark Snyder trying to get it. Will anybody go with him? Yes, the four car of Mark, or uh, excuse me, of Jim Ott stays with him. But here's Louis Clark, Patrick McQuaid, dipping down to the inside. Ten laps to go. A nice, nice push for that 21 car as he takes over the lead here. between the 15 and the 4. It looks like everybody's going to be able to hang on. We're going to stay green, I think, momentarily. Yes, we will. Some contact between the 4 car of Jim Ott, the 15 of David Hara. Both drivers being able to maintain and save. Unfortunately, the 4 car, though, losing a ton of track position. And here it is. David Lurfano, the 3rd. Teammate to the 15. On the charge. Up to the front. To help teammate David Hara when it matters most. Louis Clark behind him. And there is David Lurfano, I thought, coming up to help teammate. He's just going to blow right by him. So Mark Snyder up there all by himself momentarily. We're three wide at Daytona. Eight laps to go. And there is Lorf Lorfano. Get out of here. Nowhere to be seen all race long. And now he's bumper to bumper with his teammate, just like they want. On the outside, Hillbilly Motorsports, led by that number eight car, Lucky Dog Detail, and in the eight. Trying to get a push from the 15, but don't be sleeping on that inside line of Patrick McQuaid, Mark Snyder, and Jim Ott. You see Kyle Martin, although laps down, 
unfortunately a fast car by Kyle. However, if there's a caution to come out, he puts himself in position for the lucky dog. On the outside is David Lurfano, David Hera, Kyle Martin. Those three teams working together are those three cars, excuse me. The 21 car, though, not going away easy. He's going to break up that draft as both the Davids check down low. So a nice bump by that 99 car, and they said see you later. All single file for the most part. Kyle's going to have to fall back in line, single file. That's okay. He's a lap down anyways. Probably best just to keep your nose out of this. So now we've done a complete switch. Both Davids onto the inside. Hot. Snyder on the outside looking for anything. As it looks like Ott now a single file dropping down low. Patrick McQuaid up there by himself. Oh, Louis Clark went with him, but Patrick came back down. Six laps to go. That 77 knows the 73 will go up with him the next time he's ready. Onto the front stretch. Will this be it? Will we see the 77 dip up high with the 73? Louis Clark. And if so, will anybody else go with them? All single file on the low side for the time being. Maybe not wanting to make a move too early. Still five laps to go. That's an eternity here at Daytona. When you're talking about escaping the draft and making one of your own, that's where races are won and lost. So these guys might just be holding on for a little bit. David Lurfano, quiet all race long, finds himself as your new race leader. Both those drivers up front, some of the most patient drivers I've seen on a track. They never seem to care what their track position is until it counts. Never rushing to anything, and you can see putting themselves up in a good position for a 1-2 finish, but I don't think that 77 and 73 are done. I think they're just waiting three laps to go next time around. On to the front stretch. Here we go. David Lerfano, David Hera, Patrick McQuaid running one through three. Two laps to go, and this is going to start getting dicey. When will Patrick McQuaid and Louis Clark try to make a move onto the outside if they decide to do so? Or are we going to stay single file? You see that car, I don't know who that is. That scared me with how this race has gone, leaving pit road. Not too sure who that was. Tyrone Yo, I believe. I don't know if that 77 is going to have enough to make a run on the outside. David Lurfano going to take the white flag this time around. They're coming up on a lapped car. As Chad Snyder. They can trust him. He'll make the right move. That's not what you want to see, though, if you're... I don't, I don't think the 77 is going to get a run. I don't think the 15 is going to get a run.
David Lerfano goes up high, blocks that. David here comes back down. And here's the 77 and the 73. They make contact, and that's going to be all she wrote for those two cars trying to make a run at the end. It's going to be one, two, three, Lerfano. Clark coming in at the end, stealing a second place from Hera. David Lerfano going to be your race winner here at the Daytona International Speedway. And Louis Clark sneaking in there at the end to take P2 away from Era. What a great, great finish. Oh, man, that's awesome. I can't believe Lerfano came in at the end of that. So typical of that eight car to be where he needs to be at the end of the race. Teammate David here on the 15, pushing him the whole way. Once he got up in front of him, phenomenal job by those two right there. Hats off to David Hera pushing his teammate as, as far as he possibly could. Let's get a shot of Lerfano as he's doing some celebratory donuts as he should. Burn down the house. It's been a long race. See Louis Clark getting into a little bit of a celebration as well. Why not? P2 at the end there. So David Lerfano, Louis Clark, David Hara, top three. Mark Snyder, fourth. Patrick McQuaid, fifth. At what turned out to be an awesome, awesome race for most. I know some heartbreak for some. Just unfortunate. We'll talk to that third place driver, the number 15 car from Hillbilly Motorsports, David Hara. David, you got a copy? Yeah, I got you, Peter. How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. What a, a team effort out there between you and that eight car. Now, of course, Louis Clark coming in at the end, sneaking that P2 away from you. But uh, just what an unselfish play. I know you tried getting them. Uh, I know you tried giving that eight car a run at the end. Um, but what, what great team racing there out of you guys at hillbilly motorsports congratulations taking home a podium first race of the season p3 um talk to us a little bit about the daytona 500 um you know overall pretty clean i'm sure there were some tempers in there in chat there was some sloppy stuff going on but for the most part um some very good racing and um hillbilly motorsports one and three I think we lost you, David. You got me now? Yes, sir. You know, I mean, that's what we've been practicing, the the, the eight, myself, and, uh, and the 20. And uh, it, it, it worked out for us. You know, we, we tried to work together early in the race, and then there was some shuffle around with the, the first caution, I think, to come out. Kind of mixed us up and put me up front there uh, where I didn't pit. So, um, anyway, we got back together. We pushed up to the end there, and, uh, yeah, I had to go for it. I, you know, I thought about the guys back in the shop, <laughs> and uh, and I had to do it for those guys, man. I had to do it for you know David and, and David and David and David who worked back in the shop. <laughs> uh, and you know, we thought we were going to pull off. We were hoping to get the lead there, you know, hoping that we were going to get that uh, 73 to go with us. But you know, he he was going to try to win it for himself, and I don't blame him. So uh, to come home third, not so bad. I'm glad to see Hillbilly Motorsports uh, first and third. I think. Uh, Larry had some issues with uh, with eye racing, so we had a, a long caution there, kept getting extended. But that was due to uh, something with eye racing because we, you know, we had just went to pit road, and a lot of guys were in different areas of pit road. And I think when that caution came out, what happened was is eye racing had a problem determining who should be on the lead lap, put some people on the tail end of the lead lap when really we should have all been waved around the pace car. But you know, it's just. We finally got it straightened out and got going again, and it was some fun, exciting racing there at the end. And uh, just glad to be here in third, man, for the Blue Gray Plastic Fabrication uh, Chevrolet. You can check them out, bluegrayplasticfab.com. That's bluegrayplasticfab.com. Plastic or customplasticfab.com. But uh, 
Yeah, yeah I, try to, I, I try to say that as, as least as possible on stream because I always mess it up. So I'm glad you finished third so you could get in here and take a stab at it. You, you know, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I mess it up. But I, <laughs> I'm just glad we got a good finish for him. Uh, and, and I'm glad Dave got a good finish for, uh, for Lucky Dog Detailing. Um, it was just a great day for Hillbilly Motorsports. We put a plan together. We felt like we were going to come out and be dominant. And I think we led quite a few laps out front there. And, uh, and then Dave coming home with the win and us in third. Can't ask for for much more. I, I wish you know the bad luck wouldn't happen with the twenty. And uh, and for some reason, uh, I racing just disqualified him, and he uh, wasn't in a whole lot of mess. But yeah, uh, so we'll figure out what's going on and get all that stuff straightened out. But uh, just glad to be here, man. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, congrats, P three. Thanks for the interview, man. We'll talk to you yeah. next week. Real quick, I wanna I wanna uh, I wanna thank uh, Top Sale Trucking for the Trucker Feed America series. That's awesome. Uh, glad those guys are on board. And, uh, Great interview with you guys earlier. Absolutely, buddy. Take care. All right, next, P2. Coming from across the pond, JLC Motorsports. His partner went down a little bit earlier in the race on a silly caution. Louis Clark, do you got a copy? Yo, man. Louis, P2, you snuck it in there at the very last moment, coming off turn four, just squeaking by that 15 car. Congratulations on P2. Um, it, it was sad what happened to Caden Tufts, of course, but you were able to bounce back. You and McQuaid still continuing um, a little bit of teamwork throughout that race um, as, as he comes home P5, but he was making sure he was right up there with you. You got a little bit of a push, I think, from Kyle Martin earlier on in the race. Looks like maybe you had some engine failure. He gave you a push down pit road. You were able to put your quick repair on, get back out of the track, and just a stunning finish to steal that P2 away from David Hera. Louis, P2, um, congrats on that. Talk to us a little bit about the night. Yeah, man, no, it's a, a good night here. Yeah, um, me and Caden, we went into it saying that we were going to run out of the back and um, see how the race goes. We ended up like fifth, sixth. And, uh, you know, if we didn't have that silly caution in the middle, me, Patrick, and uh, and Caden, um, we would have, uh, we had, we were all on the same stint plan. Um, we had been perfect. Uh, yeah, I don't know what Casey was doing coming out of the pit there, but it um, it wrecked Caden's engine and it wrecked my engine, hence why I got a push from uh, from your driver. Yeah, and I see uh, Patrick McQuaid currently Dark Horse Motorsports. Is that something you guys had uh, were 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 talking about uh, mid race? Did you guys communicate with him? Say, hey, you're with us. Let's run this thing out to the end. Yeah, so when we I lost Caden, I knew that me and Patrick have a good, uh, good like friend relationship, whatever you want to call it. But to us, we know we can run well together. So I knew I could trust him, and he could trust me. So uh, I feel bad because I uh, got him a bit loose on free. I weren't lifting. I was trying to get into that front. I, as I said, I'm not running for points. I'm only running for team points. So you know, I wanted. Uh, He's a good man. I, uh, I'm i a bit annoyed I didn't get him the win. But, you know, Lefano and the, the HMS boys done amazing. Yeah, they did a good job. Louis Clark. Uh, track rapport, I think, is what you're looking for between yourself and McQuaid. Phenomenal job. Way to stick it out there and uh, take home P2, Louis. Congratulations on that. And I'm sure we'll talk to you a little bit more down the road uh, as the season progresses. Thanks, Louis. Cheers, man. Have a good night, all. All right, now bringing in that number eight car of Hillbilly Motorsports, David Lorfano. Lorfano, how you doing? No, not too bad. Oh, not too bad. No good. big, no big deal. Just taking home another win at Daytona. So listen, you know, a very, very patient drive out of you tonight. There were times where you weren't even with the lead pack. Now, obviously, we had some unfortunate cautions, kind of regroup you guys back together. Um but even with that being said, nonetheless, when you took over the lead, you started making a charge up to the front. I, I guess I wasn't as shocked as maybe I thought I was, because after all, I mean, you are coming off the season championship. But I was shocked a little bit because we hadn't called your name um, up front for pretty much the entire race until you took that lead. So first and foremost, congratulations on winning the Daytona. And secondly, how were you able to pull it off and, and stay there at the end and make that charge? Man, I mean, my my plan 
was to run at the back anyways. Um, there was a couple times there where I thought, man, we're, we're too far back. and But I, I had a feeling we were going to get some late cautions that would group us back up. And with that last one with like 10, 15 to go, I just I just went for it. It was I couldn't couldn't hold back any longer. So but it all worked out. I mean, I, to be honest, I don't know how I made it up through to the front. I know I I got up through there and got hooked up with Hillbilly or sorry David here here at the end, and uh, we kind of teamed up and and stayed out front, and it all worked out. Yeah, great, great, great teamwork um, at the end of that race out of you guys at uh, HMS Motorsports. Hats off to uh, David Hera. He got Louis Clark snuck his way into that second place. It had Hera's name written all over it. But nonetheless, a great drive by two teammates to be able to come home, both with podiums. Obviously, individual points, you guys are looking good. And team-wise, team points, you guys are looking even better. So congratulations, David, on the run here. Um, We'll let you go celebrate it with your teammate, David Hera. Uh, Appreciate you taking the time for the interview before... We let you go. You have anything that you'd like to say? No, uh, I mean, lucky dog detail, and I can't. I still can't thank him enough for for jumping on board here. I got to give a shout out to uh, Louis Clark. Uh, he's one one hell of a a driver here. He's always in the mix, no matter where we go. And he made me a little nervous there coming to the line. I I didn't know what he was gonna do, but. Uh, and he basically told me after, hey, if you spun, you spun. But I had to do what I had to do. So, but it all worked out. And uh, congratulations to uh, to my teammate David too. Uh, it's great for the team to be up front here in the first race. I hope we keep it going. All right, buddy. Hey, congrats. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, faded. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was race winner David Lorfano the third driving that number eight car for Lucky Dog Detailing. And what a race. What a race to start off this next-gen cup series. Truckers Feed America brought to you by Top Sail Trucking. We'll see you next Tuesday. I'm Faded TV, and we're signing off. We appreciate you guys. Turn on notifications if you're new to the stream. We got broadcasts in and out all week long. But it looks like these Tuesday nights are going to be something special and something you don't want to miss. Appreciate you guys.